Hey everyone, welcome back. It is Lucid and it is turn 80 in The Sound and the Fury. We are playing Late Age Ulm and uh, we have finally gotten this turn, Alteration 9. Um, and we also got a message from Erythra, or however the hell you say that. Uh, as you've probably all pointed out in the comments like a hundred episodes ago how you say it, but uh, there's some lag between when I record these and when I put them up, so I haven't seen it yet. Uh, the war uh, has been mixed so far. I've uh, taken a handful of territories, but not a lot. Lemuria's cut me off from reaching more, so I may end up uh, in conflict with him in the near future. So, I, and I don't have a great scouting network going down there, so I don't really know what's happening. I probably should try to send out more spies. So, uh, we empower this guy in blood. It's actually not for frost demons. It's actually for um, this one of the water dudes to summon ice devils. They are pretty good thugs, actually, and I'm going to start using them, I think, against Lemuria. Uh, okay. Uh, Infernal Disease, we kill an Acolyte. Do we? Okay. This actually is probably going to be a little close, because these guys can totally die to Acolytes. Yeah, you can see he almost killed them. 16 HP. If he did, like, Hand of Death or something, it would have killed him. Um, okay, we cast Infernal Disease, didn't find anyone. That means I kind of mistargeted that, actually. Uh, we killed another Acolyte. So these are actually higher value. These are the mages instead of just the priests. So, anyway, that's pretty cool. Uh, Mind Hunt, no enemy commanders. Where the hell am I targeting with this? Huh. I wonder how that is. I thought there were mages there, I guess. I don't know what happened to the to the dude. Maybe they got gotten last turn, or maybe Abyssia... Uh, maybe Abyssia got them. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, we have some hard battles. Kill a bunch of these guys, but not enough. So... That is unfortunate. So, you can see, we attacked this again with horrors. We attacked him last turn, and this time I get good belly maw horrors. Um, unfortunately though, are these guys poor amphibians? No, these guys are amphibians, they're not poor amphibians. Are these, guys, these guys are poor amphibians, so their stats are a little worse. Oh man, and we just barely don't make it. That's unfortunate. So... Uh, meanwhile, here we attack uh, Lemuria. They have a pretty big squad uh, of dudes, and we kill them with horrors. Oh, we might get there. Yeah, we do. Uh, we get their leader. So that is all fine and dandy. Was that this one? Yep. And yeah, you can see we got there. Oh no, that was the PD leader. Okay. Anyway, it still caused a rout, and uh, here I think we take these guys. So this was important because I think it cut off this army's movement if indeed they were going to move up this way. So that's nice. Um, here, okay, we're, we're not going to go click through the rest of all this stuff again because I think it just takes too long. Um, these guys... We're going to split them up and we're going to siege down, or we're going to not siege, we're going to raid on top of these, which should shut down ghost production. Um, and limit troop mobility up into this quadrant while I try to take it out. Um, we're going to leave one, or what, two guys, I think I only meant to leave one, but I end up leaving two guys here on top. One of them's just set up to run. This guy I think I meant to take somewhere, but he must not have gotten move orders. Here, I didn't even set up scripts. Basically, nobody has uh, the slaves for any of these, so they're just going to scale of spam, so it's kind of fine. I mean, it would look prettier if I said scale of spam, but that's exactly what they're going to do with this script. So, um, And yeah, that will hopefully lower ghost production. So it's having a guy sit on top of a fort is basically the same thing as killing 20 ghosts. So we want to do more of that. Um, 
Oh, we had a big battle here in Micklin. So, uh, well, big, I don't know about that, but we're trying to take the Micklin fort. And he has some dudes inside, but not too much. He's got one Grand Lemur. Um, and that is not going to be enough to do anything. And you can see we are pretty successful. We surround the Grand Lemur, though, and... Uh, he's a bit of a road bump. Yeah, but we get him. So, cannot complain there. Uh, Micklin is ours again, as it should be. It gives us uh, a nature, an astral, uh, a blood slave, a fire gem, and a water gem. So, not a bad site to have, but it's now down to 3,000 population. Woe is the god of Micklin, if only he could see what happened to his home province now. Um, we're going to go ahead and take this army and move it up. Uh, we've re-gemmed everyone, and we've put some ghoul guardians up at the front. And um, what's changed now is that we have this guy who's going to be a communion master and cast army of gold. So these guys will be very hard to kill. Um, I don't think I have chaff coming up. I think this is just meant to like run into this big army and fight and hopefully kill them. Uh, we should also have anti-magic and other important stuff coming out. Yeah, like this guy's going to be casting anti-magic. Um, I've got a scout coming with some more gems to re... Uh, so that we don't have to run if they fight us here. And then... I probably should have figured out a way to re... Oh no, I have a, a dude on top, so this guy will keep this fort under siege. Um, and we're going to raid here and raid here. I've got... Uh, this guy... So I'm not actually casting... Um, send horror at this province. I'm just sending in this guy. I made a Bane thug to go, or a Bane Lord thug to go underwater. This, uh, we'll find out next turn, but this isn't gonna work. I'll just spoil it for you. I thought that Life Drain worked on these guys uh, against ghosts since they're not lifeless, uh, but it does not work on undead. So, yeah. Uh, I thought this was going to kind of sustain him, but it won't. So he's going to gradually lose all his HP and die. And he doesn't have a shield, and I should have given him... Like, this would have been much better, and I had the gear right here to do it, but like... Any old shield, where are you? Oh, I think I already clicked the shield, yeah. So that, and then like this, this would be better. Or like, this would be better. The brand AoE still works underwater, but that would have been way better. He would have won this battle, but instead I was an idiot and gave him shit. So anyway, he's probably going to go die. Then uh, we are doing a horrors here. We're going to take that. We'll probably take this too in a minute. Um, and yeah, we're gradually going to kick Lemuria out of the ocean. Um, you can see this, these two places are still under siege. This one, we're going to go ahead and try to seduce somebody inside. Um, they cannot patrol the same turn they're under siege. So we can do this. Okay, we see there's a battle here. It looks like I lost, but we'll check it out. Okay, so uh, on Lemuria's side, we've got this guy who's probably going to do Firestorm. So, did not exactly expect that. This guy, don't know what he's doing. Uh, this guy's probably doing Grip of Winter. This guy's probably doing Anti-Magic. This guy... Uh, he's empowered this, this one a few times. That would be a fun guy to Soul Slay or something like that. Uh, and then he's got a Troll King here for Army of Gold. So this is probably not going to go well for us. We, this was like, I don't know. This was this army is not really prepared for this. Zooming out. I got an anti magic off yet. No, not yet. Okay, we need to get any magic off, because you see we just got murdered. Well, no, that was uh, Firestorm, I think, murdering us. 
Yeah, this is not gonna go well. Vampires do not do well going into Firestorm. But, uh, there is good news amongst this, uh, disaster here. Unfortunately, I think we're gonna get Enslaved Mine too. Yeah, so he got this vampire. Um, so these guys are gonna be lost for forever. We might get another one too. Yeah, okay, so we lose this. I'm gonna skip forward and we'll just show you how many... If you hit F1 at the end, it's probably the best way to see how many of your vampires get converted. Um, my own buddy. Okay, so vampires, this guy got converted, and he's dead now, and then this guy, it's showing him as owning or belonging to me, but it's also showing him as being a unit, not a commander, and that it could have been he got converted and then I stole him back. I don't know. If that happened, he may respawn in my capital, but he'll come up as a unit? That would be strange. I don't know. I have no idea. So we'll see. Then uh, a bunch of my guys uh, who had snuck in here... Um... There they are, but fortunately I was smart and realized that I might lose this battle and scripted them to retreat. Yeah, and so uh, they, I think, all just run. Which is kind of what you want to do. So this guy actually, he was sneaking in. Okay, now he gets murdered. Okay, she... Uh, she runs away, so that's nice. So, uh, both of my succubi live, which is nice. So this one retreated here, and she's going to seduce, and I think my other one retreated here. Yeah, and she's going to wait. I don't know if he's going to try to move this Doomstack out this way. I think he'll probably kind of try to come up and fight um, Abyssia. But anyway, we will continue with our efforts to take this island in this very, very grindy bit of business. Um... What's making this game, like, feel like it's kind of stalling out is a couple mechanics, and there, a lot of times you'll build up a big force, and when you get a big enough force, you'll just steamroll your enemy, and that's not happening because, like, I'm kind of an economically dominant power in many ways, but um, I can't steamroll anyone because if I group up too many, like against Abyssia, he does flames from the sky, and if I group up people uh, versus Lemuria, he's going to do Wind of Death. Um... Yeah, so I'm very cautious about how many things I commit to a fight. And also, Flamestorm, it doesn't matter how many units you have in your army. So, uh, because I haven't had Alt-9, I can't um, group up my troops due to being worried about Firestorm. Uh, okay, so I think that's mostly it for events. We can see Utgard is kind of raiding. They also had a battle here. I kept the dude on top just so we could see what he rolled in. And he rolled in a pretty sizable army. Um, this is like his big army. This is his doom stack. And I'm very glad we did not fight this last turn because I did not have the means at the time to fight it. Um, this will be very tricky to fight. Uh, he has a lot of enchantresses. They are, I'm sure, up to no good. Um, and then a big skelly spam communion in the back with scrotty slaves, so... Um, yeah, we gotta be careful there. I'm trying to think what else. I think that's about it. Um, yeah, so moving armies in here. We are going to actually try to fight to this, uh, that big army. So we're going to move an army back on top. And we're set up here. We've got army of gold coming down. We've got um, a bunch of wolves. Uh, we've got some archers. We've got Creeping Doom coming out, which is kind of nice. If you cast Creeping Doom, it's 125 cast time. By the time Army of Gold comes out, uh, it's very likely that I'll have both of the Creeping Dooms off. And then all these bugs are going to have 20 protection, which is kind of hilarious. We're also going to be putting up Life After Death, which is going to apply to the bugs too, so they will turn into Solus with 20 armor. Um, we're doing Relief and Howl. 
we are doing uh, a bunch of life for a life, which I don't know how the targeting will work here. Probably it won't work too great. Um, this guy's got one of the Lucid thematic Gem Gen items, which is a... I don't actually know if I like this item. It's too, like, anime looking. I might have to go back and change the graphic, but it's, uh... Basically, it gives you five Blood Slaves every turn. I was trying to think of, like, what are ways to make, uh, like, that would automatically generate five Blood Slaves. And, you know, I was thinking you have to reproduce them, so it's like a, a demonically possessed... Or a woman gets possessed by a demon, and then, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of gross, but whatever. Uh, Life After Death... Uh, yeah, is coming out, and I think that's about it. Um, Horde of Skeletons, Life for a Life, and then we're not really planning on Wither Bones. Uh, a little bit of Iron Blizzard casting, and oh, Will of Fates is coming out too. Will of Fates is really good on top of Swarm, and then also on top of Chaff. So, uh, that's gonna be a really good spell. I'll try to be casting that a lot more. Um... And yeah, this will be a pretty interesting battle we have next turn, so definitely tune in to watch that. And next turn, actually, we're going to do it together, guys. In fact, I'm going to do it right after this, but for you, you're going to have to wait a few days. But um, yeah, we're going to... it'll be micro included. Um, we're going to... we had raided this just to get rid of Lemuria's stuff, so we're going to send a guy in to take it. This guy, actually, I'm going to send, uh, out, and the reason is, is I'm thinking these Utgard Raiders are going to come down here and attack me. So I want to catch them here. Uh, I'm going to snipe one of these commanders with Infernal Disease, which will kind of unbalance their communion, and it will be basically worthless. Uh, it'll either get one of the Masters, which is going to be pretty important. It'll cut the Communion effectiveness in half, or even better, it gets one of the Slaves, and then it's a completely worthless Communion. So, um, they can't cast Horde of Skeletons. It'll just do, like, one Skeleton at a time. So, hopefully that works. Uh, we're just going to be taking this back with a Vampire. Um, unfortunately, though, I think it will open me up to uh, having Lemuria come into this ocean, which he loves taking. Uh, but that's fine. So, uh, I think that's it. Uh, oh, other thing. Big news. This is like the biggest part of the turn. Um, we have kitted this guy up. He's got the dimensional rod, which you remember me forging. We've got the skull, uh, the starshine skull cap. We've got the boots of youth, uh, ring of sorcery, and then a crystal coin. And you can see we don't have many gems anymore. Like, we had a ton of air gems that had built up. We had a good bit of earth gems. And I think we had a lot more nature gems, too. Uh, and more fire gems, and I've alchemized a ton of shit to give me 429 astral pearls. And with that, we're going to cast Arcane Nexus. And here's what it looks like. You come in here, and so we're doing an overcasting of 179. Which is a bit tricky, because I would have liked to have gotten it up to like 320. That way if they did, people tend to kind of dispel in multiples of 100 a little bit. So I would have liked to have gotten it up to well over 300, but anyway, I didn't. Uh, the risk of doing this is the slots are filled up, and I could overwrite one of my own, so that would be annoying. Hopefully I overwrite somebody else's. Um, but if I overwrite one of my own, that's fine. The other risk is now the only easy way that I think they'll be able to dispel it is by killing my caster, which I've managed to negate most of that risk. Uh, and then also by... Um, casting Astral Corruption, or uh, one of the other Blood Spells, which basically, if, if the slots are all full and you cast one of the, the Blood Spells, uh, it will randomly target the Blood Spell against one of these, and it's the, basically it's a way to use Blood Slaves to dispel, and you can get way more Blood Slaves than you can get of gems, so he could potentially cast it, you know, Astral Corruption and take this down. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to need to make sure there's an empty spot on this at all times. Um, and I'll once I get the gems, I'll just cast a spell on one of these and just make sure one of these spots is empty. Um, and that's the way to prevent yourself from getting losing Astral Corruption, I mean uh, Arcane Nexus to one of the blood spells. So that's happening this turn. I expect that will make Abyssia want to attack me again, which is kind of fine. I'm now ready... I've got a ton of these little cubes, which I've been making. Um, I've also got fiery imps, 
which are up here. Not a ton of them yet, but I've got some. Uh, and then most importantly, I've got Army of Gold, so I'll actually be able to win the big fights. Um, I just have to... The, whoever I send in to cast it, like if I send this guy in, he's got to have gear enough to survive, basically, if he has this. Uh, this will probably be enough to survive Infernal Disease castings. I might also give him something like that. Um, and that will allow him to survive Infernal Disease. And then also, um, what do you call it? Uh, flames from the Sky, because I don't want this guy to die from that. So anyway, but he'll be in charge of Army of Gold. Uh, the only problem is he won't survive without this. He wouldn't survive uh, a leech attack from one of the Abyssian cap-only sacreds. Or cap-only uh, blood mages. So uh, giving him a rabbit foot actually helps with that. So actually I could probably skip this. Because the rabbit foot will also work against flames from the sky, I think. And then this is enough. If you have 17 protection and 10 fire resistance, you'll be okay with flames from the sky. You could get an affliction, though. So I don't know. I might put this on him anyway because I have him lying around. But um, we've got the, the rabbit foot charm that will allow him to survive leech. Leech is very, very difficult to dodge. It's not an MR check. It's armor negating damage. It's very difficult, aside from just having a ton of HP, to survive Leech, and HP is one of the things that's very hard to raise. So, uh, Rabbit Foot Charm is the way to go there. Um, and this gives you Twist Fate. So, with this, he can I can basically guarantee I'm going to get an Army of Gold casting, which will allow me to survive... Um, uh, Firestorm, and then on top of... Having vampires with these rings of fire will be able... I, I think I need to start mass... And I'll start doing it next turn. Mass producing... I, I've been saving up all my pearls to cast Arcane Nexus, but now I'm going to have a ton of pearls. So we can... Uh, we're going to start doing the rabbit foot charms in mass. And uh, those will be very helpful for surviving Leech, which I am definitely worried about for taking this throne. So all this, <clears throat> and then of course vampires. I'm gonna give them uh, these. Uh... I'll probably need to do it actually to take this throne too. I'm gonna probably need. That's why I've got so many. I'm gonna need to give all my vamp. When I decide to take it, I'm gonna have a doom stack. It'll be a high commitment attack, and yeah, we're gonna have a, a bunch of rings of fire. We pass out to survive firestorm in conjunction with um, Army of Gold. Army of Gold will be enough to keep like my human mages alive, but my vampires, because they're weak to fire, they are going to need some some fire protection there. Um, I think that's about it. So, tune in next episode. Um, we are getting ready to do a high commitment attack, right? Because we finally have the things to actually win a team battle now that we have Alt-9. So, a high commitment attack with a lot of mages. You can see I was already thinking about it this turn. I started kidding up some of the vampires with uh, with this stuff. I actually had issued a turn to attack, but then I was like, well... Um, I don't really want to yet. Like, he might move these guys out to fight Abyssia, and I would rather let him do that. Um, yeah. So, anyway, we're going to wait one turn. But uh, this coming turn, we are going to do a high commitment attack onto Lemuria... Uh, and then we're going to prepare to take this. I'm expecting Abyssia will attack me, or will uh, declare against me. And if he doesn't, I'm okay waiting a couple turns while I'll have Arcane Nexus up uh, until that happens. There's there's one other small risk that could happen, which is that one of these is cast with more gems than Arcane Nexus is. I think the chance of that happening is like a tenth of a percent. But somebody could have poured like 400 gems into one of these. Extremely, extremely, extremely unlikely. Especially, nobody pours that many gems into a gem generating global because it would never pay itself back. But it's a very remote chance. Um, I think that's it. So thank you all. We'll see you next time.